on the season finale of Beacon Web News, Andrew Strout visits the grand opening of the Silver Therapeutics Marijuana Shop. Julia Texera catches all the action from the SGA swearing in ceremony. We learn more about Hispanic representation on campus for the last episode of Beacon Web News and Espanol. I send our seniors off and we thank our faculty who will be retiring this semester. That's all coming up next on Beacon Web News. Welcome to our last episode of Beacon Web News for Spring 2019. I'm Karen Canella. Joined alongside fellow reporter and administrator Ali Tino. We've got a lot to cover, so let's dive right into your latest news. With the end of another term in sight, sometimes life can be very stressful. That's why SAC is hosting a stress-less night on May 4th from 6 to 10 p.m. in Sullivan Lounge. Many stress-relieving activities will take place, such as making your own tea, aromatherapy and therapy dogs will be present. This event is free and open for all MCLA students. The Advanced Performing Arts Management class and the Berkshire Cultural Resource Center will be hosting a comedy show featuring Sam Jay on May 5th at 7 p.m. in the Church Street Center. Jay is highly recognized for being an Emmy-nominated writer for Saturday Night Live and known for her appearance on Jimmy Kimmel Live. Tickets are free for all MCLA students and will be $5 for the general public. With the legalization of recreational marijuana in Massachusetts, dispensary shops are now opening in several places in Berkshire County. Williamstown opened the first shop in North County last week, Silver Therapeutic, and Andrew Strout was there at the grand opening to find out more about the shop. So we have some, some flour, uh, some pre-rolls as well. Um, we have uh, edibles in the form of uh, chocolates, fruit chews. On Wednesday, April 24th, a new dispensary in Williamstown, Silver Therapeutics, opened on Main Street. Even though they have just opened their doors, business is already booming. Silver Therapeutics sells various products such as vape cartridges, pre-rolled joints, and edibles. It's been great. Really steady, um, really good pace. The, uh, the, our team's been awesome. Um, you know, we're pretty much just a steady flow all day, which is great. The staff are very knowledgeable about the products they sell, knowing what effects different strains of cannabis have on people and helping customers purchase the strain that is right for them. Uh, we, our partner growers are uh, good chemistry and in good health. Uh, they have some just killer strains. With a different menu each day, customers are recommended to visit the Silver Therapeutics website which features the daily menu and the effect that a different strain has on the mind. Many strains help cannabis users cope with depression, stress, hunger, and fatigue. Since Williamstown is a border town of New York and Vermont, out-of-state customers are able to shop in Massachusetts. For anyone from you know that's 21 plus with valid ID uh, from anywhere in, Ma in Massachusetts, Vermont, New York, in the country, uh, you're, you are allowed to come here and purchase products. Um, you know, it is decriminalized. Traveling with it, uh, you know, across borders, again, it's decriminalized. It's, it's certainly, we, we never uh, promote or condone uh, the uh, diversion of cannabis. If you plan on visiting Silver Therapeutics, make sure you have a valid state ID with you and visit their website at silver-therapeutics.com. For Beacon Web News, I'm Andrew Strout. Finals week begins next week, and the Friel Library has extended their hours until 2 a.m. for students to get last-minute assignments done. If you're up all night studying for finals, or you just need to put the finishing touches on a paper, the library offers a calming, studious environment to get work done. The MCLA Honors Council presents an afternoon of elections, Chinese food, and planting on Tuesday, May 7th from noon to 2 p.m. in the Sullivan Lounge. Honors Council elections will happen at the beginning of the meeting, and the rest of the event will focus on de-stressing before finals begins by planting flowers and eating free Chinese food. This event is open to all MCLA students, regardless of honor status. Join the MCLA Writing Studio for Reading Day Tea Time on Tuesday, May 7th from 12 to 2 p.m. in the Writing Studio on the first floor of Murdoch Hall. The Writing Associates will be helping students edit their final papers alongside tea and snacks. 
All MCLA students are welcome. Our reporter Julia Texera will be doing the Bernstein Scholarship this summer for Berkshire News Now. Julia, can you tell us a little bit about what Berkshire News Now is? Well, yeah, Berkshire News Now, it's a bi-weekly um, program in which I will be covering community events, interacting with people in the North Adams community, um, and I will be basically my uh, one-woman show. I mean, I will have help, of course. Um, this year, we're bringing on um, Meg Craig as well as Robert Weary. Um, they'll both be helping me. And of course, I couldn't do any of this without the help of Peter Gentile, Sean McIntosh, and NBCTC. Are you excited about it? Tell me. Tell me your excitement a little bit. I'm very excited. Of course, you know, money, but also, too, just to uh, interact with the community because, you know, we go to school here at MCLA, but a lot of times, you know, we really just stay in this campus. So it'll be great to just venture off and to just meet new people. Awesome. Awesome, Julia. Thank you so much and have very, very good luck. Four years can go fast, and the best way to reflect on these memories can be done flipping through photographs. If you're graduating this May and would like to submit some pictures to the yearbook, now is the time. The images should be related to academics, athletics, clubs, event, student life, performances, and throwbacks. To submit, just email your pictures to yearbook at mcla.edu. At the end of this semester, many members of BWN will walk the stage of graduation, ready to tackle new adventures. Throughout today's episode, we'll be celebrating their achievements, both from this show and for whatever their future holds. Let's see who's first. Karen Canella, our executive producer, knows the BWN is what allowed her to become stronger in the field, while also getting to meet other great reporters going through similar situations. While this is also her last show, she's hopeful that Beacon Web News will continue to thrive for years to come. Following graduation, Karen will, re will return home to New York City to pursue a job in reporting where she hopes to climb the ranks of television. Are you a resident of Who's a Call? If so, you're invited to Who's a Palooza, an exclusive event solely for your dormitory. Come join your fellow floor mates and friends on the Taconic Lawn from 4 to 6 p.m. on Thursday, May 2nd, for food and games. Let's close out the semester together. It's breakfast for late dinner on May 7th. SAC is hosting its annual late night breakfast in the Campus Center Centennial Room. Come eat some of your favorite foods and enter for a chance to win some prize baskets. The event starts at 9 p.m. Let's all enjoy some French toast together before our finals begin. We've got another senior send-off. Ali Tino started last semester as a reporter and eventually became the administrator. Her favorite part of being involved with Beacon Web News was the opportunities it granted her getting to interview incredible people like ta Nahasi Kwot and report on live television for the elections but it's so appreciative of the family of friends she created. Following graduation, Ali is going to seek this representation This past Monday, for her novel the gavel was put down for the films. final student government. Join BART Theater Department Thursday, May 2nd, Friday, May 3rd, and Saturday, May 4th at 7.30 p.m. as they recreate the 1960s rock musical Little Shop of Horrors. This event will take place at BART Chartered Schools in Adams, Mass. on one commercial street. Tickets may be purchased at the door and online at brownpapertickets.com and cost $10 for adults and $5 for students. SGA has its new members for the upcoming year, and all were, what is happening? All were sworn in. Julia Texer was there to catch up on all the action of the evening. What is, this, what, is, what is going on? This past Monday, the gavel was put down for the final Student Government Association meeting of the semester, as outgoing SGA president Declan Nolan resided over his final meeting. Nolan spoke about the year that he and his cabinet had. I'm really happy with how the year went. Um, I had a great e-board, I had a great senate. Uh, it was a small group of folks, but we worked so hard and we accomplished a lot this year. I'm really proud of us. With the literal changing of the guard during the meeting, old and new faces were officially sworn in to serve for the upcoming year. One of the new faces for SGA is Ryan Duby, a brother of the Sigma Chi Beta fraternity who was officially sworn in for the Greek seat. Duby expressed his excitement about this new opportunity. Mainly I just want to um, give a positive representation of all the Greeks on campus, as well as just input my voice to impact the decisions made here 
I'm excited for Dean. Um, he was great on the e-board this year. He was on the e-board prior. Um, he knows what he's doing. He's going to fill these shoes real well. Um, I'm excited. Sam has been a part of SGA for uh, a few months now. She knows what she's doing, and I'm so excited to have uh, Gio joining us. New SGA president, Dean Little, talks about his journey to becoming president. Uh, kind of what made me take on this position was that no one else was really running for it. Uh, it was something that I've debated back and forth for the past two years, and it's a really important position to take on as far as student government goes and as far as the student voice on campus goes, and I didn't want it to go unfilled. And as for any advice that he's received? I received a lot of advice from the outgoing e-board about different things that we could we should pursue for the next year, um, different ideas that student government might want to start to take on. Um, I'll be sitting down with Declan uh, the next week or so, kind of just uh, his outgoing stuff to me for... Uh, any advice that he has, anything that uh, he had his, un his unfinished goals, going over some of the my goals for this year and stuff like that. Former President Nolan ends off with a special message to the student body. Just thank you to MCLA for letting me be in this position. I'm really grateful for this opportunity um, and I can't wait to see what SJ does in the future. And for Beacon Web News, I'm Julia Texera. Hancock Shaker Village is offering a basket weaving workshop Saturday, May 4th at 11 a.m. Shaker baskets are an iconic symbol of the simple elegance and beautiful design of Shaker objects. Materials are $20 and the participation fee is $35 for non-members and $31 for members. If you are interested in this event, you can register online at HancockShakerVillage.org or call 413-443-0188. Do you have cans and bottles? The jury band will be hosting a cans and bottles drive Saturday, May 4th, beginning at 9 a.m. at the Mass Ave Redemption Center in North Adams. If you're interested in pickup, you may email jurybandparents at gmail.com or call 413-652-177. You may also drop off what you have at the Redemption Center the day of the event. All proceeds will go towards the jury band marching in the Washington, D.C. 4th, at the 4th of July Parade this upcoming July. Andrew Belargin is what another of our graduating seniors. Mean? This fall, he, he introduced the segment, Take Note, which quickly became a fun, empowering outlet. He notes that his favorite aspect was the flexibility, the ability to speak about what he valued, and looks back fondly on his memorable episodes, like Halloween and April Fools. Following graduation, Andrew hopes to become a play-by-play -play commentator for a professional baseball team. Let's turn to him now for our final edition of Take Note. This will be the final edition of Take Note, as my time here at MCLA winds down. Naturally, this sort of thing sparks the need to reflect upon the lengthy journey I've undergone in my four years here, including the unique experience that this segment has been. For this reason, I want to take the time to tell you why the English and Communications Department on this campus is amazing and are examples of some of the many fine faculty members on this campus. For those of you with undeclared majors or lacking a definitive career path of some sort, I highly recommend giving the English and Communications Department a look. Now, I'm sure this is the part where you're thinking, oh, Andrew's going to give some cliched speech about how great all the classes are and how good the professors are. Well, yes, that's admittedly a large part of it, given that those two things are very important. In short, the department does offer an overwhelmingly wide variety of classes and activities, including creative writing, video and film editing, writing for the Beacon newspaper, literature classes, editing and producing the literary magazine Spires, and creating video news episodes for Beacon Web News. In terms of BWN, you get to learn the ropes of doing it all, being a personality, operating audio, creating graphics, directing the program, and even running cameras if needed. There's simply no shortage of things you could do within the department, and you are certain to find your niche within the English and Communications spectrum before long. Of course, it cannot be stressed enough that the faculty at this department is utterly amazing. We have a very wide variety of professors with extensive backgrounds. Many of them have published articles, stories, and books, or have experience in professional media themselves, and they all have an extensive knowledge about their given professions. There is nobody as utterly thorough and experienced with film and general media as Professor Birch is. Professor Finch is extremely passionate for writing as a whole, 
both contemporary and from the distant past, especially as the advisor to the Spires magazine. Professor Zepernick is not only excellent with both literature and film, but she is also an inspiration as a politically active, excellent, strong model for feminism that, that is a rare sight to see. Perhaps even rarer is the thought that she is one of the fine adjunct faculty within the department that has been a mainstay for a long time. Professor McIntosh has been the master behind helping the Beacon newspaper have teeth. And as those of you who read it regularly can attest to, it's pretty damn good. Professor McIntosh is also largely how Take Note has been able to be a thing this semester. Combined with Professor Wang, Professor McIntosh has been this segment's crucial advisor every step of the way. Of course, it would be difficult to discuss something related to the TV studio without also mentioning Peter Gentile. The TV studio is practically Peter's baby, and Peter fittingly fathers a productive, academic atmosphere here. Knowing the ins and outs of avid editing and how to run every piece of the board in the production room is no small feat. Professor Lesage has been on record talking about how teaching is his dream job, and this couldn't be more blatantly obvious. Professor Lesage also has a very active presence out of the classroom as well, performing at the recent talent show and being the trip advisor to two major debate club competitions. Professor Nabolsky is an adjunct professor who has been the glue to 91.1 WJW-FM for several years, and the radio station has evolved into one of the biggest organizations on campus under his guidance. I could seriously write a novel about how great each and every faculty member is, but in the interest of time, let me end by saying these are all great people both in and out of the classroom. All of them care about your grades as well as they do your general professional and academic development. You'll never have to feel left behind taking any of their classes or generally interacting with them. I've fittingly made these academic and professional strides myself. Not just that, but I've experienced lots of personal growth as a member of this department. Now you may feel the same way about your particular major and department, and if you do, I urge you to take full advantage of the professors and programs they offer, as I definitely did. I'd like to close off the year of Take Note Broadcasting by advocating that you explore the department and do so thoroughly. Thank you for viewing Take Note this school year. I encourage you to remain tuned in for, this, for today's edition of Beacon Web News, as well as viewing Beacon Web News for the entirety of next school year. Williamstown Clark Institute is holding its final first Sunday free programs for the season. Admission to all galleries and exhibitions are free all day and there will be activities included as well. All programs will be held from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. For more information, you can visit clarkart.edu. Jazz Band Spring Concert on May 6, MCLA FPA program will be hosting their end of the semester spring concert. Featuring special performances from the jazz band, the event starts at 6 p.m. in the Church Street Center. A senior send-off time again, Karina Matera, the director behind BWN, is yet another of our many seniors gearing up for life after college. Looking back, what she appreciates most is the exposure it brought her to real-world scenarios. She also loved the atmosphere of the team that was formed while working in a fast-paced environment. As for what comes next, she's hunting for a job in the La broadcasting field, she's also los open to the future, maybe even law. Whether she's serving justice like or directing the news, Karina's determination is bound to get her there. I'm glad I was in the It's the last edition of Beacon Web News in Espanol. For the final installment, Karen Caneda discusses representation in Latinos on campus. La baja representación de los hispanos en universidades y en el país es un problema grande que pasa en todas partes. En una encuesta representada por el Higher Ed Today, la población de los latinos ha crecido por 17%. Estudiantes de MCLA me hablaron de cómo ellos se sienten ser un hispano en la universidad. Me siento muy cómodo aquí porque hay otros estudiantes hispanos se sienten como, como familia y me da mucho orgullo de ser de donde yo soy. Hay un popular, o sea, more popularity en un grupo de gente y yo siendo hispano eh, sería, es diferente. So, es bueno para mí porque yo puedo conocer um, otra gente que 
no ha podido conocer en, en Boston? Yo encuentro que yo nada, yo nada más tengo como tres amigas que son hispanas y, y no, yo no puedo hablar con nadie que me puede entender de la vida mía. Cuando le pregunté de la representación de los hispanos, me comentaron... La representación de los hispanos aquí, yo digo que es un poco um, ba bajito, pero es algo que podemos eh, eh, en enforzar y um, hacer mejor o um, uh, tratar de conseguir más hispanos que pueden venir para la escuela y estudiar con nosotros. Prefiero que, que sea más estudiante latino, pero por ahora es, es algo. Yo creo que la escuela puede emplear más gente que tiene cultura. La representación de los latinos en los Estados Unidos está muy baja y también en las universidades, pero los estudiantes de MCLA tienen la esperanza que todo va a cambiar. Para Viking Web News en Español, soy Karen Canela. Solid Sound Festival from June 28th to the 30th, Mass Mocha will be hosting the Solid Sound Festival if you need a place to stay. MCOA will be providing festival lodging. The price is $375 per single room for the full three nights or $504 per double room for the same. For more information, contact massmocha.org. Andrew Stratt has been a reporter WN for three semesters. His fondest memories are the friends he made along the way and the breakdowns that ensued in Avid during those stressful pre-show crunch periods. It was all worth it though because after graduation Andrew plans to continue working in the news field whether as a reporter or editor and is also open to doing some videography. Wherever, wherever he goes Andrew will find success and maybe a glass of milk. The senior welcome reception class of 2019. Let's welcome the are being welcomed to the local alumni and faculty on May 13th at 5 p.m. as you'll officially be welcomed into the Alumni Association. To register for the event, please visit alumni.mcla.edu. MCLA Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Conference from June 11th to June 14th Thanks, will be Karen. hosting its Welcome first Diversity, to the season Equity, finale and Inclusion of Conference. Weary the Weekly event Entertainment will feature News. keynote speakers Nikki Giovanni. For more information, visit www.mcla.edu academics slash academics affairs slash conferences slash index. This week on Weary News, Robert discusses the hottest summer movies that are expected to come out and all of what's to expect in entertainment after the semester finishes. Thanks, Karen. Welcome to the season finale of Weary Weekly Entertainment News. This summer is going to be a busy one for entertainment, both nationally and in Berkshire County. In this episode, I'll be helping you plan out your scheduled vacation so you can enjoy the various movies, plays, music performances, and more. Summer movies are always popular, and 2019 will be no exception. May in particular is a packed schedule for films. Some of the month's biggest movies include Aladdin, another one of Disney's renaissance into live action remakes, and Godzilla, King of the Monsters, which, while not related to the 2014 movie, does appear to have the look of a blockbuster hit. Other movies coming out in May include the political romantic comedy Longshot, female con artist movie The Hustle, two wildly different sequels A Dog's Journey and John Wick Chapter 3, the mysterious space movie Ad Astra, and the Elton John biography Rocket Man. June is also a busy month for movie lovers everywhere. X-Men Dark Phoenix will finally be released after technical issues delayed the movie for over a year. While this may remind X-Men fans of X-Men The Last Stand, this tale takes an entirely different approach. In addition, the most anticipated animated sequel in years is coming out, Toy Story 4. It's been 24 years since the original Toy Story came out, so both kids and adults are excited about this movie. Also debuting in May are a continuation into the X-Men Men in Black series, Men in Black International, a revising of the classic 70s movie Shaft, and a reboot of the legendary horror movie franchise Child's Play. Compared to May and June, July will not have as many movies playing. However, there are still some important movies being released. One of those is Spider-Man Far From Home, the next tale in the seemingly never-ending Spider-Man saga. Just wouldn't be a summer movie season without some Spider-Man. In addition, 
Disney will once again be reimagining one of their classic animated tales. In this case, The Lion King. Quarter century after the classic movie first came out, this revisioning should capture the hearts and minds of both children and fans of the original. Also coming out this month is the crazy true story, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Typically, August is considered the dog days of summer, especially for movies. However, this year seems to be the exception. For example, the Fast and Furious franchise is getting its very first spin-off, Hobbs and Shaw. Fans of the franchise should expect the same high-wire stunts and cast chemistry. In addition, the new Mutants is finally, hopefully, coming out after years of delays. This violent expansion onto the X-Men series could start an entirely new franchise. Also premiering in August is Disney's adaptation of the popular YA series Artemis Fowl, the shark movie 47 Meters Down Uncaged, and the latest Has Fallen movie Angel Has Fallen. Summer isn't just about movies, however. It's also an opportunity to get out in the community and see some great local musicians. For those of you who live in the Northern Berks area or will be on campus during the summer, Mass Mocha will be having some big name artists performing this summer. Some of the artists and acts performing include Lace Nubians, a French R&B duo known for their political music, Annie Lennox, the Grammy winning legend from the Eurythmics and powerful songwriter, the Solid Sound Music Festival, an indie rock concert whose lineups include the likes of Wilco, Courtney Barnett and more, the Pretenders, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductees who stop at Mass Mocha will be the band's only performance in North America during their world tour. Maggie Rogers, a pop indie country artist who has performed on Saturday Night Live and Coachella, and Flying Lotus, an experimental hip-hop artist and producer. These are just a few of the acts. Fair warning, during the summer, Mass Mocha generally does not offer student tickets, student discounts for tickets. Check Mass Mocha's website for more information about all the acts performing, ticket prices, and art exhibits debuting. Lastly, what would summer be without a trip to the theater? The Williamstown Theater Festival may just be the most famous theater company in Western Massachusetts. Some of the plays this summer include A Raisin in the Sun, Grand Horizon with Jesse Tyler Ferguson, Ghosts with Uma Thurman, A Human Being of a Sort with Andre Brauher, Tell Me I'm Not Crazy, and many more. However, Williamstown Theater Festival is more than that. This theater company has several different performance rings throughout the summer. Educational opportunities for any student, school, or college who is interested in theater and workshops open to the public. Check the Williamstown Theater Festival's website for information. That ends this week's and this semester's edition of Weary Weekly Entertainment News. I will be returning in the fall to discuss the many movies, plays, art exhibits, and more going on in North Adams and surrounding towns. I hope everyone watching has an excellent summer. Back over to you, Karen. Shanquel Dennis, our official City Council correspondent, is yet another senior who's got big plans. She looks back fondly op on the opportunity she had to become familiar with the people of North Adams because of her bi-weekly segment. Following graduation, she plans to start a new news podcast and eventually become an established video or photojournalist. Best of luck, Shun. Getting ready for our show every Wednesday had its ups and downs. More often than not, not everything goes according to plan. Here's a look at some of our finer moments as we work to get BWN ready each and every week. I, okay. <laughs> no, that's not right, but look at the goat. <laughs> This past week, MCLA's FPA. Hello and welcome to the April 10th episode of Beacon Web News. I'm Allie Tienel, and the teleprompter is not scrolling. <laughs> Let's start with the movies premiering at the North. Try to get rap. Ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. This week on Beacon Web News. I mean, uh, okay, um, uh, uh, time continues to be 7.30. The all nine Eber members are super excited about the... Erica Lucia was a reporter with Beacon Web News last semester and anchored for the first time just a few weeks ago. 
She loved being able to make great friends here and really got to hone her filming and editing skills. With the end of the school year coming in fast, Erica plans to continue her education at Full Sail University in Florida for film production. As the That's all for this week's episode of Beacon Web News. Thank you for tuning in every week. Good luck to our graduating seniors, and we hope you have a great rest of the weekend. Bye.